the last video in this algebra and functions and equations and stuff unit of the SAT Math Bootcamp is going to be transformations. And this is not geometric transformations. I'll have a little bit to say about that in the geometry set of the videos, but even then there's not much of the traditional transformation stuff you've potentially learned in geometry on the SAT, so that's a good thing. Uh, but what we do, what I do mean by transformations actually is kind of functions transformations, transformations of functions. And what I mean by that is, let's say we're given some function. Let's say, often it's with a parabola. Let's say it looks like that. Um, and actually, let's talk about parabolas for a second anyway. Uh, because, um, well, I'll get there in a second. All right, so, let's say we're given this uh, parabola and we're told that's f of x. Let's pretend then they say, what is f of x plus 1 going to look like? Well, what would happen then? Well, we have to think about it this way. Um, there's kind of two ways to think about it. First, you can memorize it. Second, you can think about why the change happens. And I think, you know, you can memorize it, but you can always have this kind of uh, intuition about it as well that can help you figure it out on your own. So let's m figure it out first. Let's say you have something like this plus 1 and minus 1. If it's plus 1 and it's inside the function parentheses as such, then you got to go ahead and move it to the left. One unit. If it's minus 1 and it's inside the parentheses, you're moving it to the right. So if this is green, then this function would look something like this. Not great, but you get the idea. Right? Just shifted one unit to the left. If this one is purple, then this function would just be shifted one unit to the right. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So you can memorize, the one thing that's a little confusing is you might think plus one shifts it to the right, it doesn't. Uh, you can memorize it this way. We can also think about, well, why does this happen? Well, let's think about this for a minute. Let's think of f of zero right here. Here's f of zero, it's some value, let's just call that one, whatever. So let's just say f of zero equals one. What happens if we add one to the function, like like this. Well, then that means that f of 0, when x is 0, it's acting like the function is f of 1, right? Because we plug 0 in here, but it's actually 0 plus 1 is 1. So we actually evaluate it, the function at 1. So what does that mean? Well, it means when we plug in 0, it's going to have the same y value as f of 1. Well, in this case, f of 1 is this. So f of 0 is going to have that evaluation. What about f of 1? Well, f of 1, which would normally be right here, is going to have an evaluation at f of 2. So f of 1 is going to be where f of 2 would be, so right here, and so on, right? So that is why you're getting shifted to the left, because essentially this function is going forward in time, right? Uh, when you have some x value, you add 1 to it, you're evaluating it later down the kind of to the right side of it, which is why it's kind of being shifted to the left. What about this way? Well, f of 0, if we subtract 1 from it, you're evaluating f of 0 at f of negative 1. So f of 0 is here, but f of negative 1 is right here, so actually, this is not going to work out very well with this picture, when we evaluate f of 0, we have to evaluate it at f of negative 1, so like right here, not a great picture, but that's why it's being shifted to the right, because it's essentially going slower in time, I guess you can put it this way. So it's not going as quickly uh, up and down. And it's pretty much moving the zero point. I mean, another way to put it is this way. f of 1 is right here. f of 1 minus 1 would be f of 0. So we evaluate f of 1 at where 0 used to be. So that's why this is the turning point, which used to be at f of 0, is now at f of 1. That may be a little bit too confusing. If it is, just ignore that. You can just memorize plus 1 shifts it to the left, minus 1 shifts it to the right. Uh, a little bit easier one is this. Let's say we have that same function, f of x. And let's say I ask you, what is f of x plus 1? And what is f of x minus 1? Note now, the plus and minus are outside of the parenthesis. When it's outside the parenthesis, when it's at its plus 1, it shifts up. So if this is red, it's going to look something like this, shifts up one unit. If it's minus 1 and outside, it shifts down one unit, so maybe it looks something like this. Again, why does this happen? Let's think. Let's say we evaluate it at f of 0. We evaluate at f of 0, we get some number, and whatever number we get, we then add 1 to it. So originally, it was here, 
but now it goes up one. Here it goes up one. Here it goes up one. Here it goes up one. So that's pretty easy to see. And then if you subtract one, it does the same thing. So this one's a little bit easier. It's a little more intuitive. First off, it's easier to memorize this because plus one brings it up, and that makes sense, right? Given the direction of the axes. But also the intuition as to why it moves is also a lot easier to understand than this example here. And then we can combine these, right? If I asked you, let's say we had, and this doesn't have to be with parabolas, it can be with something like this. This is f of x. Let's say I asked you for f of x plus 2 minus 1. What would you do with that? Well, first thing first, I'd have to shift it to the left, 2. So if this would be the 0, it would actually be here. And then I have to shift it down 1. So actually, it would turn here, so it would look something like this. Not a great example, but you can see it shifted to the left 2 and down 1. And that's pretty much all you have to do. And generally, you're not going to have to draw these yourself. You're just going to be given you know, A, B, C, D, E, five different graphs, and you've got to pick the one that matches this transformation. That's pretty much it when it comes to transformations of functions. I will say one quick thing about, um, well, a couple other quick things, actually, I should mention. First about uh, quadratics. If you've got a negative x squared, generally, that's going to make it a, what's called a frowny face. Um, if that negative is next to the x squared. If it's a positive x squared, it's generally going to be a happy face. That's just a general thing to remember. Uh, if you're ever given an equation, though, you can always put in your own x values and graph it yourself. So you can always be pretty sure about what it's going to look like. Um, and then finally, uh, absolute value functions. Let's say we're given x plus 2 equals f of x. What does that look like? Well, let's think about it. x plus 2, the normal function, looks something like Let's see, 1, 2, like this. Oops, y-intercept of 2. Well, what's happening with the absolute value? It turns any y value that's negative into a positive. So you can imagine that this bounces off the y-axis and goes this way. So the this function in purple would look something like this. Because you should have no negative y's because you have an absolute value here. So that's pretty much it for the function stuff and for functions and transformations. And that's pretty much it for the algebra and function section of this boot camp. Next, we're going to move on to the various geometry topics that you'll see on the SAT.